first step is to understand the template. There's two fold lines that are critical to the installation. If your doorstop is greater than one and one half inches, you're going to use the upper fold line. If your doorstop is less than one and one half inches or a blade stop, you're going to use the lower fold line. For example, on this door, the stop is one and three quarter inches. So on that door, we're going to use the upper fold line. And on this door, the stop is only a blade stop, which is only a quarter of an inch thick. So we're going to use the lower fold line. Once you've selected the proper fold, you want to align the edge of the template, not with, a, not with the edge of the door, but with the edge of the center line of the, of the pivot of the hinge. So you're going to slide this until the edge of the template is right in line with the imaginary center line of the hinge. And then once you get that set, you reach up here, grab the tape, peel it off, and stick the template down to the door. Now what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll close the door. And we're going to mount our, our center line position for our door arm mounting shoe. If you have a butt hinge or an offset pivot, you use the line indicated as such. And if you have a, a center pivot, you're going to use the, um, the, the line right next to it. You simply mark your center line location. Often it's handy to use a builder square. This door is hung using an offset pivot as opposed to a butt hinge. So in this door, you're going to align your template not with the edge of the door, but with the center line of the offset pivot. You'll then remove the tape and adhere the template to the door. What we want to do is mark the locations for the rivet nuts to mount this mounting plate up on the door. The upper location in solid is for narrow style aluminum doors. The lower location that's dotted is for medium style, wide style, or, or wood doors. Six locations are provided. We only need to use four of the six. So we want to select four locations minimum to mount this plate to the door. When selecting your mounting locations, make sure that the location is not going to interfere with your glass stop or rail. Once you've selected your four mounting locations, simply use a uh, center punch and a hammer to mark the location. On the medium style door, we use the lower mounting location to mark our, our holes for the, for the plate which is going to mount here. On the narrow style door, we're going to use the upper mounting locations. So we're going to mount the plate up in the upper location. Again, being careful when marking the locations not to mark one on the center line of the glass stop. This is the door arm mounting shoe. It has a uh, vertical line here for lining up with the, uh, the line that we drew. This is a triangular mounting bracket that applies to the face of the frame. It's going to attach in this slot and screw in from this back side like this. Now I will mark the hole locations for the door or mounting shoe. The triangular uh, support bracket mounted in this location covers most of your application, but there is some variation. But depending upon your frame conditions, the support bracket can mount here, here, or here. Our goal is to get as many mounting holes into the frame as possible. In all cases, uh, this edge must be between 5 eighths and 1 and 1 half inches away from the face of the door when it's installed. So if I put this bracket up here like this, and I measure, I can be up as close as 5 eighths and as far as away as 1 and 1 half. So no less than 5 eighths, no more than 1 and 1 half. 5 eighths, 1 and 1 half. After you've got your mounting hole locations marked, uh, you're going to drill 25 64 drill bit, starting with a small bit, working your way up to a larger bit. It's going to put it up here. Drill your holes. Using your rivet nut installation tool, you're going to uh, install the appropriate rivet nuts into both the door and the frame. We'll now install the um, operator mounting bracket to the door using the quarter 20 cap screws, the washer, and a 316 
hex wrench. Uh, Loctite has already been provided on every screw, so there's no need to, uh, to, to, to re-Loctite. Re Install the two operator mounting pins using a 7 16 inch box wrench or an adjustable. Medium style doors use the upper mounting pins. Narrow style doors use the lower mounting pins. Next, install your operator mounting bracket dress cover. In this example, the door uh, arm mounting bracket was mounting on the stop itself. But in this application, we have a blade stop. Now, there's not enough thickness for us to mount it to the stop, so we're actually mounting it on the frame. And the trick is that this bracket has to be between this 5 8 line that I've drawn here and this one and a half inch line here. So this bracket must be between these two locations here. So the only time we eliminate this triangular support bracket, which would normally be used here, is some cases where this dimension is so long that there is no place to put this. In other words, if this frame were, were way out here, then we would eliminate the triangle. We would mount this and try to get as many fasteners as possible into the frame. Using the uh, cap screws provided, we're now going to install the uh, door arm mounting bracket using the 3 16 inch hex wrench and once again the Loctite has already been applied to the screws so there's no need to apply additional Loctite. Next, we're going to install the door arm mounting shoe using the hex wrench provided 3 16 and the, the dimension that we're going to get is from the edge of the door to the center line of this is going to be 6 and 3 From the face of the door to the center line of this screw, we want a dimension of 6 and 3 Lastly, tighten the door arm pivot shoe to the bracket using the four screws. We recommend the rivnuts in that triangular bracket because it makes for an unbelievably strong door arm connection. In this step, we're going to connect the door opener to the door uh, opener mark mounting bracket. We have two screws provided. They already contain a Loctite patch. We'll drop these into the, to the two holes. I'm going to use the uh, 3 16 hex wrench. Let me just connect it up like this. In this step, we're going to attach the cast aluminum door arm to the top of the triangular hardened steel output shaft of the operator. Um, okay. It's important in the way we tighten down these bolts, which we'll show you next. And uh, we're going to use, our again, our 3 16 hex wrench to uh, tighten the bolts. I'm going to slide that down on top of the shaft. This door arm goes all the way up against the face of the door. And I'll tighten these screws in a circular pattern, quarter turn at a time until they're fully tight. And it's important that these screws are very, very tight. As tight as you can get them with your wrench. Complete. Now what we like to do is uh, we like to connect the door arm to the door arm mounting shoe. So pull the door closed. I want to make sure that these, these two holes line up using this bolt. But we'd like to add just a little bit of tension to pull away from the door just a little bit when these holes line up. And to do that, we're gonna actually rotate this in or out. I can make the door arm longer, or I could rotate this part in and make the door arm shorter. Just so we have just a little bit of preload right here. And we're gonna go ahead and insert the screw. Pull it 
pull this away just a little bit so you get threaded. And we're going to use our 3 16 wrench and attach this bolt. So what we have up here is a spring that we can use uh, to adjust the force at which it's required to open the door and, uh, and close the door. And it's adjustable for different sizes. The factory setting covers us for about 80 to 85 percent of the applications. But we can adjust it by inserting our wrench and turn clockwise to increase or counterclockwise to decrease. It's an installation tip. The door arm is adjustable at this at this end link. Uh, we could we could uh, increase or decrease the length of the arm, which enables us to control the preload that's uh, that's on the door. And additionally, the this device operates as a uh, shock absorbing door arm. So what we have, and when we're all the way at out, out at the end of the travel, you'll be able to see the spring that's uh, captured within the end of the device. Well, it appears this threaded portion and this cast aluminum portion are are the same. Piece. They're actually two separate pieces that are broken right on this line. So when the door goes all the way out to its, its end position, 95, 93 degrees, however it's set, this will actually move back and forth against that spring to absorb the impact or the load as the door comes fully open. Just as an installation tip, we include uh, two washers that enable you to space the door arm away from the door arm shoe in the event that it's rubbing. Sometimes the door arm may rub against the door arm bracket, particularly in this location. So we provide these two washers. You could use either one or two. It can be placed on top of the screw before the connection is made, which will give you just a little bit of space to prevent the two components from rubbing together. So included with the ADA Easy unit are two wireless uh, push-button transmitters, radio frequency transmitters, and the hardware pack that can mount the, the, uh, the button to either hollow metal, aluminum, wood, or uh, sheetrock. And it includes a key that enables us to, uh, to disassemble them. Basically, it's, a, it's a, a blind hole through the face. You'll insert the key. You'll rotate the, uh, the screw that's hidden behind there, which will allow this plate to come off, revealing our uh, circuit board. The code says that the push button should be within 12 feet of the door. These buttons will work up to 85 feet away from the door. In this step, we connect the, the battery. It's uh, three wires with a three connect three position connector, and it's got keyed. And only it only connect in to one of these connectors. I'll pull this wire downward, and you'll make this connection just hook up right there, just like that. Okay, program the ADA easy yeah. unit is, is easy. What we're going to do is we're going to press the select button and the enter button at the same time. We're going to hold it for three seconds. We're going to get a visual indication to tell us that the unit's in programming mode. In the first position, closed position is going to illuminate red, telling us oh, that there's no value the stored for closed position yet. Then yeah, we're going to walk yeah, through. We're going to go to the open yeah. position and the auto setup position. So I'll demonstrate. We're going to press the select and enter push buttons at the same time and hold them for two seconds. We're going to get a visual indication to tell us that the unit is entered programming mode. With the door closed, we're going to press enter to store the value for closed position. We're then going to open the door fully. We're going to press enter to store the open position. We're going to allow the door to close, and we're going to press enter to start the auto setup procedure. The door will open to 30 degrees, calculating the door's size and weight in order to tune it to ANSI. We are then going to press and hold the enter button to exit the programming mode. After we have exited the programming mode, we will then be able to press either of the wireless push button transmitters to cycle the door open and closed.
And go ahead. We'll clean our glass before applying our stickers. Yeah, slowly coming. Everyone's coming slowly. But I, you know, I just sent out the email for tomorrow, so everyone's We have three stickers that we're going to apply. Automatic caution door, activate switch to operate, and a daily safety check. These two go on the glass, and when they're when they're peeled back, they reveal the opposite sign, so we can put it, it'll shine right through the glass for us. What we're gonna do is put these 50 inches high, plus or minus one foot, and pick out our spot on the glass. Next to the door. 